everybody and welcome to the virtual phonics information evening. Unfortunately, it can't be done in person this year, but hopefully next year that will change. So tonight we're hoping to help you find out a little bit more about your child's phonics learning so that you can support them further at home and have a better understanding of what we are doing with them at school. We're hoping to answer some of the following questions, such as what phonics is, how we teach it at Witterson Church Lane, what the phonics screening check consists of, and as I mentioned earlier, how you can support your child at home. So the purpose of phonics is essentially to teach children how to read and write, and the majority of schools use phonics to do so. Um, children are taught to look and at and listen to sounds in words to help them read and write. So they're taught to associate specific sounds with letters. Every child works at a different pace and they're all supported in different ways as a result. So what is phonics? Can you pause the video here and attempt to read the text below? How did you attempt to read it and what strategies did you use? You probably looked at each individual letter and tried to sound each word out. And this is exactly how children begin to learn to read, by breaking down words into individual letter sounds. So how is phonics taught at Worcesterson Church Lane Academy? At Worcesterson Church Lane, children are put into groups according to their phonic ability and these change regularly depending on the children's needs at any given time. Children are taught within these groups by teachers and TAs within their year group bubbles and they'll have access to teacher and TAs lessons throughout the term. These lessons might include practical work, computer work using the interactive whiteboard, written work and or reading activities. OK, so for the next part of the information evening, we're going to have a look at some terminology. So when your children come home from school, they might be telling you what they've been doing in phonics today. And some of the words that they might use might be unfamiliar to you if phonics was not the way that you were taught to read when you were at school. So we're just going to go through a few of these now. So on the screen here, we have got the words down the left hand side and the definitions on the right. So I'll just explain a few of these to you. So when the children talk about digraphs and trigraphs, this is where we would have two or three letters that represent one sound. So for example, in the word snail that you can see here, the A and the I, they are a digraph that makes the sound A. And in the word night, you have got the I, G, H that go together to make the sound I. When we talk about a split digraph, that is where we have two letters that make one sound, but is split up within a word. Now you might know this as the magic E. I know when I was at school, that's how I was taught it. But now we refer to this as a split digraph. So the children will be taught to look for those two letters that are split up over a word. So for example, the I and the E in bike and the A and the E in maid. When we talk about a phoneme, that is the smallest unit of sound in a word. And a grapheme is the letter that represents that sound. Now, when we teach children to read, we sometimes talk to them about segmenting and blending. And what we mean by that is being able to break the words down into individual sounds and then blending is putting it back together again. So if we were going to read the word cat and we would tell the children to segment it, that would mean they would say cat. And then to blend it, they would put those sounds back together to read the word cat. OK, so now I'm going to talk to you about the different phases of phonics teaching. So this refers to the different letters and different sounds that your children will be learning as they go through reception, year one and also into year two. So when the children are at preschool, they will do lots of phase one phonics. And we do carry some of this on when the children start in reception as well. So phase one phonics teaches the children lots about sounds. So they listen to sounds around them and they start to learn the basic listening and attention skills that they need. Because it's really important that children are able to listen before they begin to learn letters and sounds because they need to be able to hear sounds to be able to hear words and to read words as well. Uh, so phase one falls a lot within the communication, language and literacy all those elements that we teach in reception as part of the early years foundation stage curriculum. And we do a lot of work on that throughout the year, even when the children are learning more uh, letters and sounds within phase two and three, we still do lots of work on phase one, the listening and the attention skills as well. So as I've put at the bottom here, it doesn't end when the children leave reception. So all the way through school, 
children will do lots of work on listening skills and attention. So when the children are secure with their listening and their attention skills, we then move on to phase two. So this is when the children start to learn what the letters look like and the sounds that they make. So for example, children will learn that the letter, what well, the letter S looks like and the sound it makes is S. They begin to learn skills for segmenting and blending, which is what we talked about before. And this helps them with both their reading and writing. As part of this work on phase two, the children learn how to put letters together to spell words. So not just being able to read them, they learn how to put them together to spell words as well. So they might be looking at words like sat, those letters S-A-T that are in phase two. Um, and they look at matching each letter to the sound it makes, blending it together to read a word and segmenting it, which is what I talked about before, breaking it down into the sounds to be able to spell a word. At the bottom of the PowerPoint here, there is a link um, to a video which shows you a, a bit more about blending and we will put that link on the phonics section of our website for you. Another video that we are going to put onto the website for you is one which shows you how to pronounce the sounds correctly. Now, when we are teaching children to read, it's really important that the children use the correct pronunciation of the sounds. Now, depending on regional dialects and things, children might be saying sounds differently, and that's absolutely fine. For example, in like look and look, that's absolutely fine. But there are certain sounds that the children just need to use what we call soft sounds. So for example, the letter M, the sound it would make would be M, mm, not M. And for example, the letter P would make the sound P, P rather than P. And it's quite important. It's only a really subtle difference, but it's quite important that the children learn to say those sounds because when they come to write that down, if they are saying that U, uh, at the end, quite often we will get more letters written down than we, than we need to. So if they're saying the sounds with those soft sounds, it really focuses on just that pure sound that they need. Again, the link to that video will be put onto the phonics section of the website for you. After the children are familiar with the sounds in phase two and the segmenting and blending, they then move on to phase three. Phase three, the sounds get a little bit trickier, and as you can see here on this slide, they then are introduced to digress, that's two letters making one sound, and also trigress, where three letters make one sound. Um, and the, here is a sound map that the, your child might be using in school with their reading and writing. Um, and there are 19 letters taught in phase two, and 25 new graphemes are introduced one at a time, in phase three. After phase three, the children move on to phase four. Phase four is a practice level where we revisit sounds and put sounds together making blends. So the children become more efficient in making and blending words and segmenting as well. So here you can see some of the um, blends that they learn. We've got the pr and the sk, and they just become better at blending and segmenting. After phase four, the children move on to phase five. And if you look at the sound map here, you can see that the phonemes get trickier. We've got uh, two letters that make one sound, but we've also got going into split digraphs, which has already been explained, where you've got two sound, two letters that make one sound. So in the word bone, the O-E make the O sound, and it's split with a consonant in between with the N. And so children learn to recognise these split digraphs um, and use them in both their reading and writing. Also in this phase, the children learn alternative spellings for the same sound. So as they've learnt A in phase two as A-I, they now learn that A can also be spelt with an A-Y. And also the E sound can be spelt E-A as in T and it can be spelt E-E -E as in C when we look at something. Also in this phase, the children have to learn that the grapheme, that's how the sound is written on the paper, can be pronounced in different ways. 
For example, the EA grapheme can be pronounced in the word T as an E sound, and in the word head, it's pronounced as an E S sound, and in the word break, it's pronounced as A. When your child is in year one, they'll experience something called a phonics screener. This is a little test that your child will do one to one with an adult reading some words. Some of these will be real words and some will be alien words. The phonics screener will take place during the week commencing the 7th of June next year. And some YouTube two children will take the test again that do not pass in November. There are 40 words that the children have to read and they have to read 32 correctly to pass. This test helps the teacher to know how to help your child to read and write. So don't panic if they don't pass. It's just a way of us helping your child to get better at their reading and writing. Here is an example of some of the alien words the children might come across. Here we're testing to see if the children can recognise those digraphs and trigraphs that they've been learning and see if they can blend and segment and blend those sounds together to read out the word. In phonics, the children will also come across tricky words. These are words that are not learned but using phonics and cannot be segmented and blended. The children will learn these by sight and memory instead. These words do not come up in the phonics screen either. So, how can you help your child at home? Well, please regularly look back at the phonics sounds that you've been set to have a look at and look at those tricky words also. Lots of regular reading and of your reading books and other things around the home will also help. There are lots of websites that you can access that will help your children with learning phonics. Watching Alpha Blocks is a great fun way for children to enjoy learning their sounds. Some other great websites include Phonics Play, the Letters and Sounds website, and Teach Your Monster to Read is a brilliant app that's free for PCs and often comes up free in the App Store, and it's a great fun way to teach your children to read. Play lots of games at home like I Spy, Rhyming Games, Use Your Robotic Talking, Ask Children for the P, F, N, and help them to blend those sounds together. Can you point to your t, e, t, and they've got to do the blending. As your child becomes familiar with the robot arms, can you get them to segment a word for you? Thank you for listening. We hope that this information was helpful. You'll be kept up to date with where your child is up to in their phonics learning throughout the year via the information and resources that are sent home. And if you have any other questions or any other queries, Please don't hesitate to leave them in your child's reading journal for their class teacher.